Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to the third lesson in Organic Molecules. So we've learned about what organic chemistry is and the fact that carbon is the main ingredient, the main element in organic compounds. We've also learned about how the chemists write out the structures of organic compounds. Now we start getting into the nitty gritty and in this lesson we're going to learn about the most basic organic compound and that is in the group called alkanes. Let's take a closer look at some of the more common groups or types of organic molecules that make up the backbone for more complex molecules. The first group of organic molecules we will look at are simple hydrocarbons. A hydrocarbon is a compound based on hydrogen and carbon. All of the molecules in this family are made up of chains of carbon. What special structural features do all these molecules have in common? Notice, each of these chains of carbon contains only single bonds between the carbon atoms. Organic molecules with the same structural features are called a homologous series. The homologous series of molecules with only single bonds between carbon atoms is called alkanes. Can you see any similarities between the word alkane and the names of the molecules in the picture? Look carefully. We have methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptanes, and octane. That's right. Alkanes all end in the letters A-N-E. This way, I know that if a molecule's name ends in ane, that the carbon atoms in the molecule are bonded with single covalent bonds. Throughout organic chemistry, you will see this relationship between the structure of the molecules and their names. One of our organic chemists is going to explain this to us. Hi, Philip. Please explain how organic chemists work out the names for the millions of organic molecules. Hello, Amira. It's wonderful to join you today. Yes, it really would be very difficult to give special names to all organic molecules. Lucky for us, a system to name them all was developed. The IUPAC naming system is a way to name any molecule. I'm sure we'll come across it throughout this series. This stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. The IUPAC system works like this. In any carbon molecule, we first count the longest continuous carbon chain. This gives us the first part of the name, sometimes called the prefix. One carbon is meth, two carbons is eth, three carbons is prop, and so on. After five carbons, the Greek system of noting numbers takes over. You may recognize this from maths, where a hexagon has six sides. Seven is hept, and eight is oct. Once we have the prefix, we add an ending to the name which describes how the carbon atoms are bonded. Do you remember how the names of the alkanes ended? Of course, they all ended in the letters A, N, and E. Do you think you could draw a molecule of pentane on your own? Can you see? We start off by taking the first part of the name pentane, and pent means that our carbon chain is made up of five carbon atoms. We then join them up with single bonds between the carbon atoms because we see that the name ends in A, N, E. Don't forget that we are drawing a hydrocarbon, and that means that carbon needs four bonds. So fill in the remaining bonds around carbon with hydrogen atoms until each carbon has four bonds. There we have it, the structural formula for a molecule of pentane. This system will work every time because the same steps are used to name all organic compounds. I hope you'll use it often. Before we move on, let's have a look at some of the applications of alkanes in our everyday lives. Philip will show us a diagram of a fractional distillation column which is used to separate different alkanes that occur in crude oil. Here is a group of chemicals called naphtha with very low boiling points. Gasoline, paraffin oils, 
diesel oils, lubricating oils, fuel oils, and the residue here, with the highest boiling point. Amazingly, we all know and probably use every one of these types of chemicals in our lives. The liquids called naphtha have a very low boiling point, which makes them highly flammable. For this reason, they are excellent fuels. The gasoline from the distillation column is used to make our petrol. Petrol has just the right boiling points to mix easily with air. This mixture burns inside the engine to produce the energy that we need for transport and industry. Diesel and paraffin are liquids that have much higher boiling points than gasoline. They need a much higher temperature to begin burning and this allows them to be stored and used more safely. Fractional distillation also produces much thicker substances like lubricating oils and waxes. These substances are very viscous. This means that they do not flow easily. Often a high boiling point indicates that a substance may be viscous as well. Can you think why substances that do not boil very easily are often viscous? Substances like wax that have a very high boiling point have strong intermolecular forces. These forces make it very difficult for molecules to move past one another. This makes them more viscous. The product that comes out of the fractional distillation column at the bottom is tar or asphalt. You can see that this substance is very viscous. We use tar to make the roads. Without this substance, perhaps our roads and highways would be very different and transport would be extremely difficult. I hope you're convinced now. Oil products touch every part of our lives, from the roads we drive on to the petrol in cars and taxis, even parts of the pens, rulers, chairs, and paints in the classroom are made from oil products. These fossil fuels are all important fuels. This is because the combustion reaction of alkanes is highly exothermic. The combustion of alkanes, such as propane, results in the production of carbon dioxide and water as shown in this reaction equation. The reaction is exothermic. Great, Twelves, I need to speak about the definition of saturated compounds. Compounds in which there are no multiple bonds between the carbon atoms in their hydrocarbons are called saturated compounds. Another way you could write this is that they only have single bonds. Again, you have to say between the carbon atoms. If you leave out the between the carbon atoms, then you are incorrect with the saturated. And remember what saturated means? It means that there cannot have anything added to it. And a very good example of saturated compounds are alkanes, which is why I am mentioning it. Okay, so please make sure you know this definition. It is very, very important. And the final thing I want to discuss with you with regards to alkanes is the general formula of alkanes and this is very important and I'll explain why in a second but let's look at a couple of things okay so first of all there's methane remember that meth eth prop methane has got one carbon ethane's got two carbons and prop has got three carbons so if we draw it out let's draw out methane it's carbon one two three four and it is hydrogen 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 and hydrogen that's carbon so if we count that do you agree we've got one carbon and how many hydrogens one two three and four so it's h4 if we now go to ethane we've got carbon carbon and we have got space for one two three four five six hydrogens so it becomes c2 H6 and finally if we do propane which has got three carbons we've got carbon 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 one two three four five six seven eight so if we write it out let's just do it properly we can see that we've got C3H8 and if we analyze this we can see that there's a general formula where the formula is CN H2N plus 2. Okay, so what does that mean? N stands for the number of carbons. Okay, so let's go back to the first one. Okay, okay, so okay, let's make sure this works. So we've got C times 1, then H would be 2 times 1 
plus 2. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. Yay, it works for that. Let's check for ethane. You've got C2, okay, H, 2 times 2 plus 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. C8 works for that. And then finally, let's check this. So we've got C3, so N is 3, so 2 times by 3 plus 2, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 equals 8, and yay, it works for that. So this is the general formula, and you may ask why this is important. Well, if I gave you something really big, so let's say I gave you C23H, I don't know, 48, and I said, is that an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne? The only way, if you didn't know the general formula, would be for you to draw this out. And who has time to draw out three, 23 carbons and then check how many hydrogens are joined up? That's just not going to work, okay? But if we look at the formula, we go, okay, well, 2 times 23, oopsie, 23, happens to be 46. And I add 2, that gives me 48. Oh, my hat. This belongs, belongs to the homologous series of alkanes, and that is why the general formula is so important. Right, so please go study this video again, and then make sure you understand alkanes, and then go do the assessment in the Turnable system. Have a great day.